good morning, Radiant Lifers and friends. Guest, welcome. My name is Brandon. I'm our community next steps pastor. We're getting ready to sing just a couple of songs, but I want to read one Bible verse before we get into this song. And it's found in the uh, book of Proverbs, chapter 17, verse 22. It says, A joyful heart is good medicine. Now, I know it could have been a tough week, and you're like, I'm ready to be boosted. I think as we get ready to sing this next song, you can't help but to maybe tap your foot, and that joy will begin to just rise to the surface. So I want to encourage you, even if there's people around you right now, maybe stand up, get off that couch, get up out of that chair, and just stand up as we sing this song.
Amen. You know what? Right now, why don't you jump in the comments and just type one reason this week that God has shown himself great in your life. Just one way that he's shown himself great. And I know we should see the comments just stacking up because we all have at least one or, or even more ways that we could say, God, you've been great in, our, in my life this week. Lord, you've been great. You've done great things in my life. So just right now, just type that one thing, maybe a short sentence of how God's shown himself faithful to you. Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on the cursed tree. His body bowed. And drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still and all. about you, but in these days, I'm looking forward to the return of Jesus. Amen. He shall return in robes of white. The blazing sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise. Among the saints, my gaze transfixed on Jesus' face.
Hey there, friends. Welcome back. If you're just hopping on, my name is Brandon. I'm our Community Next Steps pastor. Just want to welcome you here this morning. Now, we haven't had a lot of announcements over the last few weeks. Uh, this week, we have a mouthful. So please hang tight with me. There's a lot of cool stuff that's happening in the next week. And so we just want to give you the information uh, as we get it as well. Pastor JB hit a home run last week and just challenging us to sharpen our sword. And he mentioned just a couple of ways that we can do that. One of them is our next steps experience. You may have no idea where or how to get started with sharpening your saw. The next steps experience is for you. It, uh, so you're gonna see a link here in the comments below to sign up for our next steps experience it's four weeks long it's going to happen right after the service starting in august so it'll be the first four weeks in august it'll be a completely online experience and i fully believe that god is going to reveal himself to you during that journey another way to sharpen your saw is through life groups you're gonna see a link down in the comments right now to sign up for life groups. So I wanna encourage you to head over there. It's a very easy form. It's your first, last name, and an email. If you're signing up with your spouse, please sign up separately. That way I can keep track of numbers a little bit easier. And I'll be in touch with you this week to give you some more information. Hey, this next announcement I am super excited about. This Wednesday, just in a few days, we're gonna have Worship Wednesday live here on location, outside here at Radiant Life Church. It's gonna be at 6 p.m., bring a lawn chair, we're gonna exercise social distancing. I am so excited to see you guys come here. We're gonna sing a couple of songs, Pastor Ryan's gonna bring a devotional thought, and we're gonna have our first live worship experience outside here at Radio Life. I cannot wait to see you guys. Hey, church family, I appreciate you so much and just how you have made God first. And, and this, this whole offering tithe thing, depending on your church background, it can seem awkward. I get it, I, I really do. But this honestly is a faith and trust thing in God. We, we have faith and trust in Him that He's given us positions to earn money, to be able to put food on the table sort of thing. And all God asks for is just a little bit in return. And so thank you so much for your giving. We have several ways that you can give. You can do it the old fashioned way with snail mail and you can put it in the envelope, 907 North Nottawa. Put that stamp on there and throw it in the mailbox. Another way is you can head over to the website and there's also an app called Tithely. Uh, that's the way that I give. You can also set it up for reoccurring giving. So you can almost set it and forget it sort of thing. And then for the opposite of snail mail would be text to give. I'm still new to this one, but you're gonna see the number down here. You're gonna text the number and you set it up once and you just text in the dollar amount and it's literally that simple. So thank you church family for your faithful giving here to Radiant Life. All day, every day, an invisible war rages around you. A cunning devilish enemy seeks to wreak havoc on everything that matters. your mind and emotions, your family, your future. But his reign stops here, right now, with you. Well, good morning, Radiant Life. First and foremost, thanks for inviting us into your home. And today, we are wrapping up our summer teaching series titled SWAT, Spiritual Warfare and Tactics. And I know, for at least for me, I have grown a lot in this series and have learned a lot. And uh, I find it kind of ironic that in the middle of a series on spiritual warfare and tactics, I feel like I've been under attack in the midst of all of it. So I think it's kind of ironic. But I hope with everything that you are growing in this and that we're taking this battle seriously. And if you missed any of the weeks and you want to get caught up, 
please go to our website, theradiantlife.church. Go to our media page and you can get it all caught up from week one to now. But we've been in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 and uh, Paul is writing to the church in a city called Ephesus. It was a port city. It was a pretty wild city. And uh, Paul is in prison in Rome. Every single day he gets to see the Roman soldier in all his gear. And Paul's like, I got an idea. There's a spiritual battle around us and he's got to inform the Christians, the followers of Jesus in the city of Ephesus. He's going to remind them of something to put on to fight the spiritual battle. And he's basing it all on the look of a Roman soldier. So let's jump right in. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 begins this way. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Now, I love stopping there because we have to understand that there is something deeper underneath the surface. It's kind of like when you go to the beach and you can go to the beach and see like the beach and just the water and it's, it's great. But if you were to actually put on the appropriate gear, your scuba diving gear, you can go under and realize that there's a whole nother world and full of life down under. I felt Australian right there, down under. But you go under and it's it's just beautiful. And Paul's kind of saying, hey, what appears on the surface, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. What appears neighbor against neighbor, spouse against spouse, Republican against Democrat, whatever it appears, there's something deeper. It's not just what appears on the surface level. And then he says this, But here's our real struggle. It's against the rulers and against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against, watch this, the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Now, one of the previous weeks, I kind of unpacked a little bit about the, um, the enemy of our soul, Satan the devil, and what, how he deceives us. And again, go back and watch those messages. But I want to take a moment to kind of unpack what are some of these spiritual forces of evil. We're told in scripture that there's a real enemy of our souls, which is the devil, it's Satan, who's the father of lies, deceiving. But he has workers. And we're told in scripture that these workers, they're demons. And I want you, if you're a note taker right now, to get out a notepad. And again, the devil doesn't care if you recognize him, if you think he's real, or his workers known as demons are real. Jesus talks about it. And you have to understand, demons are out to get you. They're the workers of Satan. And so here are three principles of demons I want to give to you right now. These spiritual forces of evil that are working in the heavenly realms against you. Here's the first point. Demons desire to inflict suffering on you. Demons desire to inflict suffering on you. If you're a follower of Jesus, you have to understand this. In fact, Matthew um, talks about it in verse seven or chapter seventeen. Uh, there's a father that has a son that's demon possessed, and here's the story. It says, "Lord, he's talking to Jesus. Have mercy on my son," he said. He has seizures and watch this, and is suffering greatly. And Jesus is going to say, okay, um, I understand your pain as a father. Um, He obviously is suffering. There's something going on. Bring the boy here. And the dad gets the boy and presents him to Jesus. And a few verses later, here's what Jesus says. Jesus rebuked the demon. And it came out of the boy and he was healed from that moment. Demons desire to inflict suffering on you. Now, I want to make it very clear. If you are a follower of Jesus, you have the stamp of Jesus Christ. You are adopted. You are possessed by your heavenly Father. You, as a follower of Jesus, cannot be like this boy. You cannot be demon-possessed because you have the seal and stamp approval of your heavenly Father. You are his. But listen, You can be demon oppressed, where the demon wants to inflict harm and suffering on you. There's a difference there. If you're a child of God, you are his. But there are still workers out there in Satan's army that wants to inflict suffering on you. 
Here's another point. Demons scheme to lure you away from God. One of the main objectives of the devil and the, the spiritual forces in the heavenly realms is to get you off of your purpose for God. In fact, here's, here's the verse in 1 Timothy 4.1. It reads this way. Watch this. This is amazing. The Spirit, which is talking about the Holy Spirit, the Spirit clearly says that in later times, some will, watch this, abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. There will be those that were in the faith, that we thought were in the faith, but they're going to abandon it and follow these spirits that and things taught by demons. One of the objectives that a demon has, if you're a follower of Jesus, is lure you away from the purposes of God in your life. There's a spiritual battle and it's real. And it's happening all around us. And here's the third point. That demons want to paralyze you with fear. And I know some of you may be saying right now in this moment, that's me. This whole season that we're in, just life and just, I'm fearful. Let me give you a word of encouragement if you're facing fear this morning. That spirit of fear that is on you is not of your heavenly father. In fact, 2 Timothy says this, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. That spirit is from something else and it's anti-God, it's of the devil. But the spirit of God has given you power and love and a sound mind. The devil is after us and we have to understand that. And Paul is writing to those first century followers of Jesus saying, wake up, wake up. There is a real battle happening and we got to understand that it's not against flesh and blood. There's deeper spiritual things happening that you and I just cannot see, but we have to understand it's real and we have to come up against it. We have to come up against it. And so Paul continues the rest of his verse. He says this, remember, for our struggle is not it's not, you need to highlight, circle that in your Bible. It's not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil and the heavenly realms. Therefore, so Paul's understanding, there's a spiritual battle happening. And then Paul's saying, therefore, I need to tell you something else because a spiritual battle is happening. Put on the full armor of God. The full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. Who doesn't want to stand? I want you to stand. That's why we're doing this series. I want to stand. We need to be aware, though. Paul's saying, be aware so you, when the day of evil comes, and it's coming, and for some of us, it happens as soon as you wake up. I want you to stand. Stand your ground, and after you've done everything, he repeats it again. You've done everything, Stand. Stay there. And I love, remember, please remember as we close this series, please remember, whose armor is it? It's not yours. It's God's. It's God's armor. There for you. Your lovingly, heavenly father says, you don't have to fight this alone. I've given you all the weapons. Please be reminded of this. We don't fight with our power, but with God's authority. You... You try fighting Satan with your own power, good luck. Some of you are like, I've been doing that far too long. Thank you for this series, Pastor Ryan. Like, thank you. Come on, you have God's authority. You are his, you are claimed by him. Understand that. And that's where we gotta live into. We have God's power and authority. It's not ours. How am I going to face this battle? You say, God, this is your battle and victory is already won. Help me, get me equipped to go into it though. But it's yours. Oh, I'm preaching this morning. I'm preaching. Here we go. And my watch is saying I'm preaching too. So here. All right. Paul continues. Stand firm then. Stand firm them. And this is where he gives you the entire list of the Roman soldier's outfit, but puts a spiritual twist to it. Stand firm then. And we've talked all about this armor so far. With the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel 
of peace. The gospel is the good news. It's the message of Jesus Christ of peace. In addition to all this, take up your shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, which we looked at last week. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. And I know some of us, you may be saying, Ryan, am I alone in this? Like I've been battling and battling. Hear these words. We are in a spiritual struggle. All of us. Satan and his workers want to lure you away from God. Every day, flesh, flesh, spirit, spirit battles are happening in our lives. But take heart. I want to, listen, lean in right now. Lean in for a moment. But we are not alone. What you're facing, someone else is probably facing. And you're not fighting this battle alone. God is with you. God is with you even though you may not feel like he is. God's promise will always be yes and amen. And he promised you as a follower of Jesus, he's with you. He's with you. So before we jump in and wrap this whole series up, looking at what I think is the last piece of armor, I want to pray for us this morning. So let me pray. Heavenly Father, would you just open our eyes to this last piece? God, would we, would we recognize and open our eyes to understand that there is a spiritual battle for our souls each and every day? Every minute, every second in our lives, there's a battle raging. And God, as we learned in week one, we don't fight for victory, we fight from victory. And help us stand on the promises of Jesus Christ in our life. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but have you ever gone out and like all of a sudden just stopped and you realize like, why, why am I stopping? Maybe perhaps for you, it, you run and you, you're a runner and you go and you like stop at mile two and you're like, I planned on four miles. I don't know why I'm just like stopping right now. Or you're on a hard project and you're working, working and you just stop and you're like, what's going on? Like, why did I just, why did I stop? Or for some of you, you love the buffet. Now, granted, maybe you haven't been at a buffet for about six months, it feels like. I mean, uh, you haven't been to a buffet since 2019, which felt like that was five years ago. But hey, all of a sudden, you thought you were so hungry and you just abruptly stop. You're like, I I don't know if I really want this anymore, right? I think this is the way we treat the armor of God. We abruptly stop. Here's what I mean. Check this out. Because many of you, I've heard for the past week, I don't get the seventh armor, Ryan. The seventh piece of the armor. I see six. I don't see seven. Here's what I mean. This is where we stop. We stop in verse 17 when it wraps up. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And the sword of the spirit would be the sixth piece of spiritual armor Paul talks about. But we stop there. But I want you to know from week one, we've always gone into the next verse verse 18. So when you study the Bible, when you read it, always read every verse in context. So what I mean by that is understand some biblical, understand background, first and foremost, like, hey, it's the book of Ephesians. What does that even mean? Oh, Paul's writing to a church in Ephesus. But also read in context. Read what's before your chunk of scripture and what's after your chunk of scripture. And check this out. The problem is we stop here. But Paul doesn't stop here. Look how verse 18 begins. And he's adding something. He's like, I'm not done. I know I've given you six pieces of armor, but I got a seventh. I got a big and I need you to do something else. You have the armor and there's something else you got to do with the armor. And here it is. Pray in the Spirit. We have to pray. Prayer is our seventh piece of armor. And look what he says. On all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests, with this in mind, be alert 
And always keep on praying for the Lord's people. Be alert. That's what this series is trying to help us. Be alert that a spiritual battle is going on. But look at this. Here it is. Here's what's interesting. Super interesting. Um, What's interesting is Paul nails all six actual armor pieces that a Roman soldier has. This is super fascinating. But the problem is it appears that Paul left one out. Every Roman soldier would have had a spear in their hand in their arsenal as well. And you go through the seven pieces and you're like, I don't see a spear. Did Paul purposely leave it out? What's going on? If you understand the first century Roman soldier, they had spears in hand at all time. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing what Paul is saying. Oh, guess how many spears? Up to six spears, by the way. Long ones, short ones. They had six spears in their arsenal. I wonder if this Paul's not saying, hey, the prayer is the spear. Because watch this. All kinds of prayers. And if I'm honest, I think we pray safe. Lord, bless this food. Can I, there's nothing wrong with saying prayers over meals, but the Lord has already blessed it if you have it. Let me say that again. You have money, you go out to eat. You ha- did you have the money to buy that? Okay, well, some of us, maybe not. We're racking up credit card debt, all right? That may be bad. But the Lord has blessed it. Now, it's great. I mean, I say it. Don't get me wrong. Lord bless it. But I've learned from my friend, Pastor Brandon Kinsey, a prayer that I start praying now, and I sit there and say, Lord, bless this food. Bless the hands that made it. The people behind the counter that's in the kitchen, bless them. Bless them. But if we really took an examination of our prayer life, We'd sit there and say, we play it safe. We pray prayers about me. Lord, keep me safe while I travel, which, which don't get me wrong, they're good prayers. They're, I mean, I, I said that. I just got back on vacation. Guess what? When my family got in the van, I said a prayer that he would give us travel mercies. I did. But we need to get bolder in our prayers. And here's one major reason. There's a spiritual battle happening all around us. And we need to get bolder in our prayers. And remember what Paul's saying. You got six pieces, uh uh-uh, and you got to cover it in prayer. There's seven pieces. And here's, here's what you need to know. Prayer is not our last resort, but our first response. We always wait till we're in trouble to pray to God. Hey, God, help me now. I need you. Why weren't we on our knees praying in the first place? We should always respond in prayer. Now, we have this awesome, I I think it's awesome, our Radiant Reflections podcast. And I talked about it in there. I talked about a podcast that, in, in, in our podcast, I was talking about another podcast that I was listening to. And their whole idea was if they were Satan, they were trying to figure out how to disrupt the Christian life. And they came up with this idea because it was all based on military. If I can get you, if you were playing the devil, if you will, just play with me. If I can get a Christian, a follower of Jesus, to not talk to God in the first 30 minutes that they wake up, I can have their day. Every minute, I am a firm believer. The more I study spiritual warfare and understand Satan and his demons, I believe as soon as we wake up, we say, good morning, Heavenly Father. I'm yours, use me. There is a spiritual battle happening all around me and my wife and my kids and this church and in our community. God, would you protect us? Would you help us gird up our loins in biblical truth? Shield us from the enemy. Send us out. Make us bold. It ought to be our first response, not wait till we're in trouble and start praying. It's on our knees in communication with the Heavenly Father, the creator of this universe, who loves you deeply and loves me. I love, look what he says. And pray, seventh piece, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions. Not just occasions that you're in trouble. Not just, in ca- all, not just on occasions when you are in dire need of something. It's on all occasion. Prayer's a lifestyle. It's a constant communication with our Heavenly Father. Prayer is not an event that you may say in the morning and before you go to bed or at mealtime. It's a constant communication with Him. All occasions. All occasions. And here's what I love what Paul says. And pray. Here's the power of prayer in your life. Get ready. 
Prayer activates our spiritual armor. Prayer is there is the igniter to your spiritual armor. You want to make the devil shudder in his feet? Start talking to God. Start claiming the name of Jesus in your life because we know that the demons flee at the mention of the name Jesus. It's God's power and authority in your life. Start activating your spiritual armor in prayer. Paul says you have six pieces which are, God, which are awesome. And pray, and pray. You got to cover that. It activates it all. It ignites it all. And it's like we're activating, we're asking God to come down and to battle for us in the spiritual realms. We're asking him. Prayer activates the spiritual armor. I, I, I don't know how many of you love baseball. I think baseball is beginning to a little bit fade here as an American pastime sport, as maybe football and, and actually soccer is on a significant rise here in America but Billy Sunday, a former professional baseball player that turned evangelist, I love what Billy Sunday has to say about prayer. This is his quote. If you are a stranger to prayer, you're a stranger to the greatest source of power known to human beings. Just let that sit in for a moment. Your greatest source of power is prayer. It's prayer. Prayer is a vital, it's a vital, a vital and thriving part of your life. You will never experience spiritual victory unless you're on your knees in prayer. We gotta pray. And I thought to myself, how do we have a message without giving you about 60 or 90 seconds right now in this moment to pray? So maybe some of us are watching this morning and we're on, if we're honest, we're like, Ryan, I, I haven't even said hello to God yet. And here it is, 10.30 in the morning. All I've had is coffee and I'm still in my pajamas eating a bowl of cereal on the couch right now. So we're gonna throw a countdown timer on the TV like we did back in May if you were with us. And I'm gonna give you right now 90 seconds. Cover your life in prayer right now. And then I'm gonna close with another slide. But take 90 seconds right now. And that was only 90 seconds. We got to do that all the time. When you're driving down the road, when you wake up in the morning, when you're at your desk in your cubicle, when you're talking with a coworker or a neighbor, you can still just be in prayer. And I know for many of you, that wasn't long enough for your spiritual battle that you're facing right now. Let's just fall on our knees and get into the presence of God who has all power and authority. I want to close and wrap up this whole series with this statement. The way to defeat Satan is not to engage. Get this. 
because you can't do it on your own. It is to get filled with the presence of Jesus. It's to absolutely get filled with the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. That's where we fight from, his victory. And it's won. How are you gonna get into God's presence? You gotta get into it every single day. That's why you can't just wait from Sunday to Sunday. You gotta feed yourself. You gotta get into God's word. You gotta get on your knees in prayer. And maybe for some of you, it is, it's a sprawl all out, face on the ground, weeping before God, pleading before him. Here's what I'm really excited about. Remember how we're wrapping up and the seventh piece is all about prayer. And I told us, I think we're praying to safe. The Christian life and following Jesus is never safe. It's never about comfort. It's all about God's calling. And his calling is always worried more about who you are than what you're doing. And you are a child of God first and foremost. That is your calling in life. So I'm excited next week in the month of August. This is going to be awesome. I mean, I am, uh, I can't wait for next week. We're jumping into a new series that's tagging into this idea of the power of prayer. And it's called Dangerous Prayers. Why dangerous? Because we're playing it too safe. Why dangerous? Because there's a spiritual battle happening all around us. We got to get a be, we got to become a people of dangerous prayers. Where we're asking God to search me. We're asking God to send me. We're asking God to make us bold. We begin to pray those prayers. We're going to see the kingdom of God get ushered into our lives and see a ripple effect in our homes and in our workplaces, in our neighborhoods, in our communities for him. We got to start being a church praying dangerously. Not safe. Not about us. But all about him. The one who saved me from my sins, it's going to be about you. It always will be about you. And I'm going to pray that your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So the, week, the, month of, the month of September, I'm already jumping ahead to fall. I'm ready for football. Please, Lord, make it come back. Make football come back. But I'm August. We're going to wrap up the summer. Dangerous prayers. But don't forget the way to defeat Satan is not to engage him. <laughs> Remember, we learned in week one, Satan does have some power. Remember that. He does. But it's to get filled. Get filled. Many of us, we're fighting battles and we have an empty cup. Get filled with the presence of Jesus. So every week so far, we've done a something up. You probably know what it is. Go ahead right now. Throw it in the comments. You know what it is. Blank up. Throw it in the comments. Go. Some of you are like, I'm too nervous right now. I don't know. If I get it wrong, I don't want to throw it in. Hey, brothers, sisters, family, friends, we need to pray up. We need to pray up. I think this, honestly, they're all important. This is the one that activates it all to be in an intimate relationship, eyeball, basically eyeball to eyeball with God in his throne room. Say, you've got this. Let's pray up. So Heavenly Father, we want to get prayed up. We want to pray up. So help us be bold. Help us go big in our prayers. Help us to every day know that prayer is a lifestyle, not just an event, not just something we do in the morning and maybe lunch and dinner time. It's all the time. As Paul says, pray and pray in the spirit on all occasions. All occasions because there's a spiritual battle happening all around us. So Father, give us the power to pray in your spirit. Give us the power and the boldness to pray dangerously. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Wow. What an amazing teaching series, this journey that we've been on and just SWAT and equipping ourselves for spiritual warfare. 
And I want to encourage you, maybe even go back and re-watch any of these teaching series. Make sure that you equip yourself with all the pieces of armor. And just like what Pastor Ryan said, let's pray up. And with that being said, I am so excited for next week's brand new teaching series called Dangerous Prayers. I can't even describe to you how excited I am about this teaching series and just being in conversation with Pastor Ryan. So I hope to see you guys next week as we kick off Dangerous Prayers. Go and be radiant.